thank you for joining me for this tutorial today. When you first load VPSP onto your computer or remote server, you can open it by going to the folder where you installed the software using your web browser. For example, if you unzipped VPSP to your local computer into a folder called shopping, then you would use in your web browser localhost forward slash shopping. If you install VPSP remotely on a server, into a folder called shopping, you can go to the start page by opening the site in a web browser using, for example, the following URL, www.yourdomain.com forward slash shopping, changing your domain to your web address. This is the page that you will see. If you've got to this page, then you're ready to start the install process. In this tutorial, I will not be showing you how to set up your server, but I will point you to the relevant guides that will walk you through the setting permissions processes, etc. Let's get started. There's some valuable information on this page with the most important being the link to the quick start guide. The guide provides detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to install VPSP. These are the steps you'll be going through to install the software. Um, if you cannot open the page, you may need to configure your computer to run ASP. If using Vista or Windows 7, the link on the screen will open up the step-by-step -step instructions for you. Click enter the setup when ready. The first step is to set up your folder permissions. There are two links here that walk you through exactly what you need to do to set up locally. If working remotely, you will need to provide to your web host this list of folders for them to set read write permissions on. If they need further information, you can provide them with the Windows XP instructions. The top five folders are the only required folders that you need to set read write permissions on. I've already set my permissions to read write on all folders, including the optional ones, however these are not necessary to complete the install. Now it's time to set up your database. You have a choice of using Access, MySQL or SQL Server. For this example I've set up using the default Access database. You can always upgrade later to SQL Server or MySQL using the upgrade tools. Enter a name for your database and then check the database and move to the next screen. Now we can populate our database with some sample data. This is very helpful to give you an idea of what format you need to enter your products and categories. Click generate and then continue. On this page we will be entering the admin access details. You need to enter the username and passwords as a combination of letters and numbers. You will be provided with a summary page of your details at the end that you can print out for your record so you do not forget what you've selected. You can also change these details later as well. Enter your new username and password, click update information and then continue. Now we need to set the name of the admin login page. Once you've completed the setup, you can also rename the admin folder for extra security. Enter your new page name and click the continue button. The next setting is the encryption. This can be any mix of number and letters. You will only ever have to do this once and it just needs to be a minimum of 10 characters. On this page, we will be entering your email address and other company details, also your email server settings. We will firstly enter the email address. Now enter the name that you would like to be the from name on your emails to your customers. Next, enter the default subject line. This next setting is one that will have been provided to you by your remote web host or if working locally, will probably be the mail server name of your ISP. Some servers require authentication to send out emails. This is generally the email address and password from one of your domain accounts. If you want to find out what email components are installed, click the test mail component link. The most common type is CDO Sys and that's the one we recommend using. You can leave the default page as it is. And the last field is a title that will appear in the browser. Click update cart details. We're now on the last page. When ordering VP cart, you will have received an order number or if installing the light version, your order number will be the word starter. The shop ID is a unique name for this particular store. Every VP cart store on your server or computer must have a unique name. The domain field is filled in by default, however, if you wish to change this, you can do so. Enter your SSL URL if you have one or leave blank. Change your company details and click update information. And we're done. VP card is now set and ready to start working with. At the top is a reminder about some security changes you need to make prior to going live. 
You can see there is a link to your admin and to your store's new homepage. You can print off the summary page for your records. This is highly recommended. Let's now have a quick look at your new homepage. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you found it useful.